All right, we're back at it for unit seven, day one. This is the beginning of systems. So when we are talking about a system of equations, we're talking about two equations in the same coordinate plane. So there's gonna be two different lines when we graph these. So our goal today, when we graph both of these equations, is to find out where they're gonna cross because that's where the solution is. So what does it mean to be a solution? This is the ordered pair that makes both equations true. So if you were to plug in the ordered pair X and Y, it will make the top equation true and the bottom equation true. When we were dealing with solutions earlier on this year, it was the number that we'd plug in that would make the single equation true. Now, since we're dealing with two equations with X and Y, where we can graph them, we need to find both X and Y numbers that would make the top and the bottom equation true when we have two. So if we take a look at this example, it says, is one common negative two a solution to the system? Well, once again, a system means that there's two equations in the same problem. So now we need to plug in one for X and negative two for Y into the top and the bottom. So let's see if it makes the top equation true. So if I plug in negative two for Y and I plug in one for X, that would give me negative two equals four minus six. We're moving this way, we're moving up. Uh, negative two equals negative two. That works out for the top equation. But now the question is, does it work out for the bottom? So let's see if it works for both. Because if it doesn't work for both, then the answer is no, if it only works for one. So this would be negative two equals three. And I don't think that's true, right? Negative two will never equal three. So this answer is no, it's not true. Let me check to make sure that this is still recording. Oopsie. <clears throat> I do not see a recording. Let's see here. Oh, we are sharing. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Just making sure. All right. So for this next one, let's see if it makes the equation true or not. This is X and Y. So now we have one for Y and two for X, right? So that would be one minus four is equal to negative three. And is that true? Mm, that would be negative three equals negative three. So it works for the top one. But it's, remember, it's got to work for both of them in order for it to be a yes. So if we plug in the bottom, that'd be one plus one equals two, so it'd be two equals two. So it works for the bottom as well. So since it works for the top and bottom equation, this answer is yes. So you have a no and then a yes for those two problems. So one of them worked for both and one of them didn't work for both. The top one only worked for one of the two equations. So if we go on to the next, pro or the next um, page, this is where we're gonna be dealing with some graphs. So these are the steps that we're gonna be dealing with. Step one is to solve for y if necessary. See, for y if necessary. So you look at both equations, we're gonna solve for y. Step two is to graph both equations. Step three is to find the intersection, oopsie intersection point and then step four is to write your answer as an oops as an ordered pair and that's always x comma y right so let's see what we 
we have here on the first one. So this top equation has a slope of negative 2 over 1 and a y-intercept of 0 comma 2. So if we were to graph this, we go to 0, 2, and then my slope tells me to go down 2 over 1 forever. So I'm going to dot that out, by the way. That way it'll make it easier to see where these intersect. So I'm going to go up two to the left one as well, continuously. So now that is my first line. I'll do my second line in purple so it's easier to see. So that slope is 1 over 1, and that y-intercept is 0, negative 1. So we go to 0, negative 1, we go up 1 over 1, and it looks like I can already see where they overlap onto each other, right? Hopefully you guys can see. Oh man, I didn't go up 1 over 1 there. Duh. I was wondering why that looked funky. Up 1 over 1, buddy. There we go, now it's at an angle. Alright, so it goes right here. So it looks like that intersection point, if you zoomed in, would be at 1, 0. Oops. Put in the wrong spot. So where it says solution, this is 1, 0. And then that question is, does it make both equations true? Well, that's the place that it intersected, so it better, if you did plug it in, uh, looks like you'd get 0 equals negative 2 times 1 plus 2, so you're going to get 0 equals negative 2 plus 2. So yeah, it makes the first one true. And then the bottom one would be 0 equals 1 minus 1, and that 0 equals 0. So yeah, it did. So if you plug it in, and if you did this correctly graphically, then you, you should always get a yes there, by the way. All right, so that's uh, that's the first one. Number 2. We've got to graph these. The top one um, has a slope of 0 because it goes left and right. And my y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 3. So it says y equals negative 3. So I go to negative 3, and I have my dots that go all the way across here because I know it's a horizontal line when it says y equals. Same thing on this side, it just keeps going forever and ever and ever. So just a horizontal line. The next one, x equals, I know that slope is undefined for vertical lines. And it doesn't have an, a y-intercept, it actually has an x-intercept of 4, 0. So we go to 4, 0, and I draw my points that go vertical because this line has an undefined slope, which means that it goes straight up and down. So it looks to me like it's right here. If I zoomed in, that'd be a four comma negative three. So I believe that is the solution. And does that make both equations true? Well, if we plug it into the top, we'd get negative three equals negative three, that works. If we plug in the bottom, we get four equals four, so that's true. So yeah, that's a yes. So that's the first two examples of your notes. And then the last two examples. Ooh, we got a solving for y one. All right, so if we solve for y for this far, or for this top one, we'd subtract two x. Divide by negative three. So we get y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. So I go to positive 1, and I go up 2 over 3 forever. Up 2 over 3. Up 2 over 3. 
and I'll go down two to the left three, which means the same thing as up and to the right, down and to the left, just do the exact opposite. Let's see, I didn't mean to make that mark. Down two, two, three. I think those are all my points that are down two to the left three and up two and to the right three. So there's my first line. My second line, I'll go. Uh, I'll go green. So that'd be five x minus three y equals negative twelve. Subtract five x. Divide by negative three, and we get five thirds x plus four. So that tells me to go to zero comma four. And go up five over three. One, two, three, four, five, over three. And then go down five over three. One, two, three, four, five. To the left. Nope, I think I found a place that they overlap. So it looks like if you zoomed in, that's at negative three, negative one. And if you did this correct, yeah, it's always a yes, as long as you graph that correctly. And the last one, the top one's already solved for, so all I got to do is graph it. So that starts at 0, 1 as my y-intercept, and the slope tells me to go up 1 over 1 forever. Down one over one forever. So that looks good to me. The bottom one, I got to solve for y, so you got to subtract 2x. You get negative 4y equals negative 2x minus 4. Then you divide by negative 4. You get y equals one half x plus one. So we go to zero comma one and go up one over two. One over two forever. And down one to the left two forever. So then in the end, it looks like they overlap at zero one. And if you plug it in, your answer is going to be yes. So that's day one. Uh, that's finding the solution of these systems just by graphing them and finding out where they intersect. Uh, the next day will be slightly different. Uh, we're going to add something onto that. Have a great day. See you guys soon.